uh, very good evening to all of you. So the task provided to me is uh, to talk about uh, uh, antimicrobial therapy for lower respiratory tract infections. Uh, I'll be walking you through uh, the recommendations and rationale uh, of antibiotic uh, therapy in lower respiratory tract infections, both uh, in uh, community and hospital acquired settings. So what is community acquired pneumonia is presence of lung inflammation with su su sufficient extent to lead to signs and symptoms or radiological features uh, without uh, any uh, uh, contact with the hospital setting that it should be uh, of community acquisition. It's an important, uh, one of the important causes of infection and causes a lot of socioeconomic impact also. And India accounts for about 23% of global uh, pneumonia burden with the uh, high case fatality rate between 15 to 30 percent. Uh, uh, these are some epidemiological uh, uh, features, uh, I mean, facts uh, about pneumonia that uh, the mortality has remained unchanged uh, between 2005 to 2015. Uh, and there had been a steady increase in hospitalization rates, including ICUs due to CAP. Uh, mortality rate for CAP is less than 5% uh, for outpatient patients, uh, uh, outpatient cases, and uh, it rises to around 10% in admitted patients and can exceed to 30% in uh, patients admitted to ICUs. Uh, the elderly and children, uh, they have higher mortality and morbidity. And uh, uh, it has been reported in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and uh, uh, South Asia, they have uh, higher documented fatality. The common organisms which are incriminated in uh, etiology are the typical bacteria, atypical bacteria, and uh, various respiratory uh, viruses, which have been listed in the table. Uh, the commonest among which, uh, amongst the bacteria is Streptococcus pneumoniae, and amongst the atypical bacteria, mycoplasma, uh, chlamydia, they are common uh, infections encountered in day-to-day uh, -day practice. Uh, 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 after the advent of uh, the menace of uh, COVID, uh, I mean, SARS-CoV-2 is now an important cause of respiratory pathogens causing uh, pneumonia. Otherwise, influenza viruses and uh, respiratory syncytial viruses are the common viruses which cause uh, pneumonia. The microbial etiology of CAP as according to the reported literature is different uh, in different areas. In USA, 61% uh, patients do not have any pathogen detected, and uh, uh, respiratory viruses are uh, commonest uh, organism uh, incriminated or uh, demonstrated to cause pneumonia. Europe also has almost uh, uh, similar uh, pattern, but in contrast uh, to USA, the causative organism uh, uh, as bacteria as the pathogen is more commonly uh, demonstrated after uh, no pathogen uh, identified. And in India, uh, uh, the condition is different that only 6% is uh, uh, actually uh, found due to uh, respiratory viruses and 65% is because of bacterial infections. But this is uh, largely, this epidemiology largely is reflected by the amount of reporting, which is uh, done and kind of literature which is published. Uh, so there is a lot of under-reporting from, uh, from India and other countries to, uh, uh, to actually pinpoint the correct etiology. In India and other tropical countries, mycobacterium tuberculosis is an important cause of lower respiratory tract infection, which can present as acute infection also at times. Uh, Scrub typhus, leptospirosis, malaria, dengue are important disorders, uh, which uh, can be closed differentials and they are distractors. Uh, uh, from the early for the early recognition of community acquired pneumonia and a soil uh, uh, bacterium that is uh, uh, pseudo uh, bacillus pseudo -maliae, uh, uh, maliae is a causative organism for meliodosis is an important ca cause of uh, pneumonia and sepsis in India and other Southeast Asian countries. Uh, the the treatment of uh, community acquired pneumonia actually uh, depends on the site of care and the severity of illness. So there is uh, there are some uh, rules and uh, scoring systems and uh, 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 I mean ways to decide how uh, you decide where the patient uh, of a pneumonia to be treated. Uh, that is called the risk stratification, for which uh, some criteria have been laid down by 
American Thoracic Society and IDSA together in which there are major and minor criteria, uh, presence of one major and three minor criteria uh, to the extreme left of your uh, screen uh, 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 tells you that a uh, patient has got a severe community acquired pneumonia and it fulfills the criteria for admission to the ICU. Our another scoring system that is CURB 65, which contains of uh, four parameters and age more than 65. If you have zero to one points, zero uh, outpatient uh, management will suffice. Two points inpatient uh, uh, management may be considered. However, more than three points uh, inpatient management is necessary. Uh, similarly, a pneumonia severity index uh, has been designed in which uh, points have been assigned to various factors which have been listed in this uh, table. Uh, and uh, how to interpret them that if uh, the score is uh, uh, patient uh, uh, less than 70, uh, patient is low risk class 2, managed, can be managed on outpatient basis. Uh, score more than 71 to 90 uh, can be managed on outpatients versus a uh, 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 small period of observation in the ER. Uh, patient with have, uh, which has a score more than uh, between 90 to 130 they, uh, or more than 130, they have to be admitted. And uh, these are the some other uh, scoring systems that smart COP and smart CO, they have similar performance as uh, curve 65 as and uh, 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 IDSA criteria. Uh, so ambulatory care that is outpatient care should be offered to patients who are otherwise healthy, do not have any comorbidities and they have a PSI score of uh, PSI class one or two or CRB 65 score of uh, CURB 65 score of zero. Uh, moderate uh, community acquired pneumonia is termed as hospital admission, uh, requiring hospital admission in patients who have resting SpO2 less than 92% on room air, or they have a PSI of uh, stay, uh, uh, 3 or 4 with a CURB score uh, of 1 to 2. However, in patients who fulfill the criteria for IDSA criteria for uh, severe community acquired pneumonia, they should be treated in ICU. Uh, they also have a CURB 65 uh, score of more than or equal to 3 or uh, pneumonia, severe, pneumonia severity index uh, uh, of 4 to 5. So outpatient antibiotic therapy, the basic, basic principles are that for all community acquired pneumonia patients, an empiric antibiotic therapy should be designed to cover for stepto, at least step, streptococcus pneumonia and atypical pathogens. And coverage should be expanded for patients with comorbidities history of smoking, recent antibiotic use, and presence of structural lung disease. So these are the recommendations from the 2019 uh, Community Acquired Pneumonia IDSA ATS guidelines that in patients who do not have any comorbidities or do not have any risk for MRSA or pseudomonas, which I'll be telling later, can receive amoxicillin or doxycycline or macrolide. Uh, but important caveat is that uh, this should be only used in areas where macrolide resistance is less than 25% for pneumococcal infections. Uh, uh, patients, uh, I mean, uh, macrolide should only be used uh, uh, if the documented resistance is less than 25%. However, in patients who, who have comorbidity, that is chronic uh, 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 liver disease, chronic renal disease, or atherosclerotic chronic, uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, alcoholism, malignancy, or asplenia, they should be treated with amoxicillin clavulant combination a third generation cephalosporin and a macrolide, uh, which can be azithromycin, clarithromycin, uh, or clarithromycin, according to the uh, clinician's choice, uh, or a monotherapy with uh, respiratory fluoroquinolone is recommended by IDSA ATSA. However, this does not hold true for Indian uh, population because of uh, leofloxacin being a very, very important second line anti tubercular drug, and uh, it is our duty to uh, uh, inform others and also prevent uh, this rampant use of uh, misuse of respiratory fluoroquinolone so that this antibiotic could be prevented as it is a very, very important tool or uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the armamentarium uh, for management of MDR tuberculosis all over the globe. Uh, as I told you that uh, in the previous slide that MRSA, uh, risk factors for MRSA and pseudomonas, they are uh, listed in this uh, table. Uh, for MRSA, uh, presence of colonization of past infection with staph, 
or hospitalization with receipt of IV antibiotics with the prior three uh, within prior three months. ESRD participation in contact sports, injection drug use, uh, uh, crowded uh, living conditions, prisoners, recent influenza-like illness, necrotizing presence of necrotizing cavitary pneumonia on X-ray or presence of empyema, and for pseudomonas, uh, it is colonization of past infection, uh, receipt of IV antibiotics in last three months, uh, presence of immunosuppression, presence of structural lung disease like cystic fibrosis or bronchiectasis or uh, 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 TB sequelae also or a patient who have repeated exacerbations of COPD requiring frequent glucocorticoid or antibiotic usage, uh, presence of history which uh, suggests that a probability of aspiration pneumonia is there, or presence of multiple medical comorbidities like diabetes, mellitus, alcoholism, etc. So this is all uh, about outpatient therapy of uh, 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 complicated pneumonia. Now coming to the inpatient antibiotic therapy, non-severe pneumonias without any risk factors, we can give ampicillin sulbactam or a third generation injectable uh, uh, cephalosporin plus a macrolide. Uh, similarly, here also uh, 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 in a non-severe inpatient, uh, monotherapy with respiratory fluoroquinolone is recommended. However, the same uh, thing applies here also. It should not be used in Indian uh, context. Uh, uh, patients who have risk factors for pseudomonas, uh, uh, so, sorry, who do not have risk factors for uh, pseudomonas or MRSA, but there is some contraindication to use of macrolides or fluoroquinolone. In that, uh, in those patients, doxycycline can be added to the uh, uh, antibiotics suggested in the previous slide. Now, for patients who have validated risk factors for pseudomonas or MRSA, in these patients, apart from broad spectrum cover, which has been listed in the previous table, linozolid or vancomycin can be added in uh, appropriate doses. And in patients who have risk factor for pseudo, uh, uh, pseudomonas, uh, Estronam, Cefipime, uh, Ceftazidine, that is uh, uh, Cephalosporins, which have anti pseudomonal uh, activity, which can be Cefipime, Ceftazidine, or Cefabrozone, Sulbactam, or, carbo or uh, Piperacillin, Tazobactam, or Carbapenems like Imipenam or Meropenam should be used. Uh, uh, important question which is asked that what should be the appropriate duration of antibiotic therapy in committee acquired pneumonia? Uh, uh, actually, it is guided by uh, resolution of uh, all vital uh, uh, sign abnormalities like heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation and temperature. And patient has normal meditation, is able to uh, eat and carry out his uh, daily course. But antibiotics should be continued for at least five days uh, or to a, uh, uh, to a uh, point where patient uh, achieves clinical stability. Uh, because uh, inappropriate therapy uh, can lead to clinical failure, which is defined as, uh, according to different parameters, that is uh, uh, presence of symptoms, recurrence of symptoms, vital signs, laboratory uh, features, radiological findings, and the need for invasive procedure or treatment changes. These are the uh, uh, points which decide uh, or uh, diagnose clinical failure. And uh, there can be various causes. And uh, uh, although it is not uh, uh, I mean, in the part of uh, in this lecture, but the causes can be uh, host related, drug related, or presence of complications such as pleural effusion and pyma, or pathogen related uh, uh, causes, uh, which should be dealt uh, uh, appropriately or accordingly. Uh, so, empiric therapy of community acquired pneumonia, severe community acquired pneumonia, should cover the core pathogens. The core pathogens are uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae non-drug resistant enteric gram negative bacilli uh, bacteria or staph aureus and legionella species along with that uh, an empirical cover of drug resistant pathogens that is pseudomonas mrsa or other enteric gram negative uh, bacteria which are uh, i mean esbl producing uh, bacteria uh, risk factors are present so it is very uh, difficult at times that how to treat these kind of patients who are coming as a severe community acquired pneumonia admitted to the ICU, but you are not able to decide exactly uh, you should cover for DRPs or not, because under treatment will lead to increased mortality and morbidity, and over treatment will produce drug resistance. So there are some uh, people have uh, published a lot of literature for predicting uh, uh, presence of DRPs in uh, community acquired pneumonia, in which uh, uh, two authors, that is Shaw et al. and Alberti et al., they had uh, proposed uh, a scoring system in which they can predict uh, that how uh, um, uh, I mean the whether a patient is have has 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 a risk factor for the, for harboring 
drug resistant pathogens or not in which the shortals criteria showed a good negative predicted value and uh, in uh, alberti criteria uh, uh, value of 3 to 12.5 had a high uh, 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 probability of having a drug resistant pathogens but these are not clinically validated scoring systems a uh, couple of scoring scoring system we have, which have been clinically validated in the, in uh, cohort studies they have uh, uh, among them shindo and web these are the two authors which have published a good uh, i mean scoring system in which uh, the second one that is on the right one has got a very good sensitivity and specificity to uh, specificity to, to predict uh, presence of drug resistant pathogens in patient with severe cap and they can guide you to uh, to uh, add an additional coverage for drug resistant pathogens in patient with severe stomach acquired pneumonia who uh, otherwise do not fit uh, into uh, the criteria uh, uh, for having uh, validated risk factors for developing uh, for having pseudomonas mrsa or esb producing organisms uh, coming to nosocomial uh, pneumonia nosocomial uh, nosocomial pneumonia is uh, uh, lrti Uh, that was not incubating at the time of hospital admission and presents clinically two or more days after hospitalization uh, but within two weeks mostly uh, pneumonia that presents sooner should be should not be regarded as uh, should be regarded as comity acquired pneumonia and uh, ventilator associated pneumonia is nothing but nosocomial pneumonia which develops among patients who are on ventilator uh, Uh, VAP is defined as pneumonia that presents more than 48 hours after after endotracheal intubation. In the previous uh, latest uh, guidelines for management of uh, CAP, the ATS and IDSA have removed the word uh, healthcare associated uh, pneumonia because uh, it was uh, found that uh, uh, the the belief that they had an increased rate of infection with drug resistant pathogens was not found to be true. In fact, in retrospective studies. it was found to be counterproductive and there were worse outcomes when these patients were covered with broad spectrum uh, antibiotics uh, which were uh, covering for uh, drug resistant pathogens uh, if given in a empirical manner uh, so uh, patient patients meeting criteria for healthcare associated pneumonia should not be empirically treated uh, for coverage of drug resistant pathogens so here uh, there is a case scenario in which a uh, elderly gentleman is taken uh, with acute chest pain to the hospital found to be uh, st elevation mi and intubated upon admission uh, and sent to coronary care unit a primary ptca is done with a drug eluting stent two days after the admission patient develops ventilatory requirement increase and fever of 38 degree uh, uh, centigrade sorry for the typo uh, graphical error uh, tlc of 17100 uh, procal of 0.37 Tachypnea, but the patient is not in shock. A chest radiograph shows developing uh, consolidation uh, in the right upper lobe. The senior resident uh, calls you uh, uh, what antibiotics to be st started. What would be your choice? Anyone? Anybody? Respiratory people. Fipronil, tazobactam, vancomycin plus levofloxacin. Uh, unfortunately, no. I mean, the choice should be uh, cefepime plus uh, vancomycin. Why do I say so? Uh, because diagnostic. Uh, let's uh, take me to the diagnostic criteria of VAP. It is two or uh, more of the following clinical features: that is, temperature, leukopenia or leukocytosis, purulent tracheal secretions, and decreased uh, oxygenation. Plus, a chest X-ray compatible with. Pneumonia that is presence of alveolar infiltrates, air bronchograms, and new or worsened infiltrates, plus a clinical pulmonary infection uh, score of more than six. Uh, the CPIS is uh, a, a complex scoring system which contains six parameters, which have given uh, points from zero to two, and they should be they are uh, uh, it is calculated by adding the uh, numbers. So a CPIS of more than a uh, six uh, plus uh, two of the clinical criteria and a radiographic criteria these makes a diagnosis of vap so in this patient if you see this patient uh, had uh, presence of symptoms increased ventilatory requirement fever uh, leukocytosis patient was not in shock 
and Procal of 0.37, and there was a radio, radio, uh, radiographic uh, suggestion of pneumonia. So this patient qualifies for a, a hospital acquired pneumonia. And uh, in uh, hospital acquired pneumonia, we have early onset uh, uh, pneumonia that is less than 96 hours or late onset more than 96 hours. In less than 96 hours, uh, the usual etiology is streptococcus pneumonia, Klebsiella, and uh, uh, um, less commonly, uh, uh, I mean, other uh, uh, bacteria which are uh, responsible are streptococcus, hemophilus influenzae, enterobacter, e, e. coli, proteus, serratia, and staphylococcus aureus. Uh, along with that, if the patient has got risk factors, which I had previously uh, described during uh, uh, committee acquired pneumonia, that is for pseudomonas, staphylococcus, uh, uh, that is MRSA, and ESBL producing enterobacteriaceae. These organisms have to be covered. Now, you'll ask why this patient received cover for staph aureus. The answer is that in various studies, amongst uh, some uh, amongst which this one is a, a nice one which I came across, that in early onset VAP, there was, uh, in, amongst all pathogens, the only uh, important difference was between MRSA, uh, which was statistically significant, and uh, gram negative pathogens uh, in total, in, in general. So, any patient who has got early onset VAP, especially after a percutaneous intervention procedure, and developing early onset VAP should be covered for MRSA as an empirical manner, in an empirical manner and uh, uh, definitive, uh, uh, I mean, for definitive uh, therapy, investigations sh should be sent. So, uh, that is how uh, we came to conclusion that these antibiotics should have been started. Other factors which should be kept in uh, mind uh, uh, for extended etiology, that is, uh, presence of drug resistant pathogens is uh, other than the duration of hospitalization, recent hospitalization, history of recent hospitalization, prior use of broad spectrum antibiotics during current hospitalization or within 90 days of admission, prior oscillation of uh, multidrug resistant organisms and presence of immunosuppression. So when uh, we have uh, uh, I mean, decided to give definitive therapy based on various, uh, based on the uh, rep uh, results of the microbiological specimens which you have given, it is recommended that de-escalation uh, should be done uh, rather than completing the fixed course of fixed duration of treatment. Use confirmed susceptibilities to provide targeted therapy and you should optimize pharmacokinetic and dynamic properties of antibiotics, some of which were very nicely covered by, by Professor Narayan Prasad. And uh, in principle, general principle this that uh, antibiotics should be started uh, as early as possible you should draw cultures before treatment and a quicker time to antibiotic administration is associated with better outcomes. Variability exists among institution. Uh, so a local antibiogram or local microbiological data should always be uh, adhered to or should always be uh, I mean, uh, referred to before starting or selecting antibiotics and uh, uh, history of allergies, previous history and comorbidities should be taken into account. So to optimize, uh, optimize pharmacokinetics, uh, one should be knowing that which the antibiotic which you are giving is a concentration dependent antibiotic or a time dependent antibiotics. In uh, 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 meta-analysis of three studies, which uh, determined uh, uh, that whether uh, uh, pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic optimization re led to uh, better outcomes, uh, it was found that they were associated with less mortality and reduced RU length of stay. And uh, in another uh, meta-analysis, it was showed that it, it had, uh, it was associated with improved clinical cure rate. So uh, uh, while selecting your antibiotics, uh, such as, I mean, carbapenems or uh, uh, penicillins or cephalosporins, uh, uh, I mean, continuous infusion to keep the uh, antibiotic or uh, prolonged infusion to keep the concentration above the minimum inhibitory in concentration for the maximum period of time is actually warranted. And in uh, uh, the patients which are concentration dependent, uh, uh, the trough levels are more important. Peak levels are important, not important. They are more, uh, trough levels are more important, such as aminoglycosides and vancomycin, where you uh, should be, uh, uh, their single uh, uh, 24th, uh, that is uh, OD doses, is uh, better as compared to uh, uh, multiple doses in a day. Uh, so in uh, 
so all uh, of these factors, all these factors should be taken into account uh, while selecting your antibiotics and the way you uh, uh, administer those antibiotics. So uh, 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 amongst the various choices which we have uh, for uh, MRSA, we usually use linozolid, ticoplanin or vancomycin. There had been some uh, literature of uh, studying superiority of one over the other. But most of the studies, uh, they found that actually the cure rates with both the antibiotics were uh, equal and a uh, number of adverse events are, were also uh, not different amongst the groups. So there was no actual difference between uh, uh, linozolid and vancomycin. But uh, uh, in general, people are a bit resist, uh, hesitant to use vancomycin before uh, because of uh, 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 risk of uh, nephrotoxicity. However, the same has not been demonstrated in uh, clinical trials. There are uh, newer alternatives for uh, MRSA, which can be uh, telavancin, tedizolid, or septaroline. They all of them are in the sta various stages of uh, recommendation. Few of them are FDA approved, but they are, none of them have been proven to be superior to uh, uh, linozolid, vancomycin, or ticoplanin for lung infection. Uh, important point to note is daptomycin. Daptomycin cannot be used uh, to treat pneumonia because it is inactivated in the lung uh, by uh, surfactant. So uh, daptomycin, contrary to uh, the belief that it is a very good uh, drug for MRSA, it should never be used in uh, lung infections. A newer drug, ceftaroline, is a promising drug which has been uh, be approved for uh, patients with hospital-acquired pneumonia, but it has been not been... Uh, 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 the I mean, comparative studies with other uh, previous their uh, pre previous uh, predecessors are, is uh, still lacking uh, to prove its superiority over the previous ones. Uh, others are uh, ceftobiprole and tegcycline. They also have been uh, approved by tegcycline have been approved by FDA for HAP, but not for VAP. But uh, this new antibiotic ceftobiprole is yet to be studied in detail for. Uh, using uh, uh, cap and wrap. For pseudomonas, uh, same uh, thing, the antibiotics uh, which we select should be uh, taking in account the minimum in inhibitory consultation in, uh, concentration in your antibiogram. And uh, if the patient has got uh, uh, a dose which uh, uh, has got, uh, I mean, uh, 99, uh, 95 to 99% suppression of uh, 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 the bacteria uh, for uh, we, uh, in the dose is the minimum is is the breakthrough point uh, point or the minimum inhibitory concentration at which the drug should be selected, and uh, uh, for more than thirty percent of the time, if the drug concentration remains above the MIC, the results are better as compared to uh, 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 when it is le for less uh, than thirty percent of time. So uh, prolonged infusions or uh, of more than three hours or six hours have uh, been recommended for uh, patients who are in sepsis or septic shock uh, with severe pneumonia. Uh, for pseudomonas, uh, in general, the recommendation is against uh, a monotherapy with aminoglycosides. Dual therapy is recommended only in patients who have persistent septic shock or have a high mortality risk of mortality. Otherwise, in mild uh, to moderate pneumonias, Single drug therapy with pseudomonas can also be sufficient. Uh, combination therapy of for all other organisms such as acinetobacter or carbapenem resistant organisms uh, should be, uh, uh, be used uh, with the help of the antibiotic susceptibility uh, results. Uh, ampicillin sulbactam or carbapenem is usually preferred. It could be combined uh, with intravenous polymyxin. With uh, I mean, uh, intravenous polymyxin can be combined with inhaled cholestin only when it is susceptible to polymyxins. Uh, same is with carbapenem resistant organisms also. Some normal agents uh, like septazidine avibactam, which uh, is, is it's, uh, has become where nowadays is being used very commonly for hospital acquired pathogens. Uh, uh, it's a newly uh, detect, I mean, a newly uh, used uh, uh, cephalosporin with the beta lactamase inhibitors and has been approved for treatment for nosocomial pneumonia. And the clinical cure and the mortality rates were similar when comparing it with septazidine and 500 uh, when comp uh, comparing with meropinum. So uh, the results were no different from the previous uh, for, with meropinum. Uh, 
Uh, other newer drugs like ceftolozane and uh, tezobectum combination, they have yet to be approved. Uh, some other combinations of carbapenem uh, with the um, beta-lactamase inhibitors are also in, uh, in progress. So, uh, for de-escalation of therapy, procalcitonin is recommended in com combination with the clinical criteria. Uh, and it has been found to be associated with significantly shorter duration of antibiotic therapy. However, there was no difference detected for duration of mechanical ventilation, ICU length of stay, uh, clinical failure, or development of resistance. Uh, but it can be an important marker to de-escalate therapy along with clinical uh, resolution of clinical signs and symptoms. For uh, ventilator associated pneumonia or hospital, a seven dose course of antimicrobial is uh, uh, recommended. Uh, 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 by IDS, uh, ATS IDSA guidelines. Uh, it's a strong re recommendation. Uh, longer durations are not recommended. And uh, it is also, uh, uh, I mean, extrapolated to uh, uh, hospital acquired pneumonia. Uh, uh, but uh, the data is extrapolated actually from the BAB data only. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, meta analysis recently done also uh, showed that. Uh, a seven to eight day course uh, for uh, ventilator associated pneumonia or hospital pneumonia was uh, as equal to the prolonged courses of more than nine days with no difference in mortality, recurrence, treatment failure, duration of mechanical ventilation, and hospital length of stay. Uh, some of the slides we can skip. Uh, the same uh, has also been recommended for VAP with non lactose fermenting gram negative bacilli. Uh, in uh, studies as well as meta-analysis. Uh, can we go shorter than seven days? There is some data uh, from uh, a large study having more than 1,200 patients with suspected VAP. They have told that a, a patient who has uh, uh, received uh, only three days of therapy or and uh, uh, compared with uh, more than three days of therapy, the outcomes were equal. However, uh, the studies are it is too early to say that only three days of uh, treatment for uh, VAP is uh, adequate. So uh, for, uh, for all practical purposes, the duration should be seven days for most of the patient. Three days may be sufficient for a small subset of patient, but same needs to be validated by larger studies. Uh, uh, the duration should be uh, guided by resolution and of uh, resolution of clinical signs and symptoms and clinical stability. And uh, risk of mortality uh, should be assessed before uh, uh, deciding for uh, uh, duration of therapy. Sometimes patients who have increased risk of mortality, a uh, longer therapy may be uh, given. So in this patient, uh, the, uh, the index case, WBC slightly uh, came down to 14.6. Ventilator, ventilator requirements uh, were also reduced. Procalcitonin was 4.2, sputum culture uh, from uh, uh, before starting antibiotics uh, returned with this uh, uh, results. So uh, what will we do next? We will uh, discontinue all antibiotics and switch to a, uh, I mean, uh, simple third generation cephalosporin and uh, continue uh, the, uh, the treatment for desired duration, uh, for the recommended duration. Thank you.